Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Black Tub Bootlegs. Today's episode, a repair tutorial. I won this Guardian Rider at auction and it's in pretty bad shape. The packaging is actually in really bad condition and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. There's some writing here and there, but the toy itself should be reparable. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. The styrofoam insert is really what saved this toy. The kid that owned this obviously really liked it and wore the packaging out, opening it and closing it and putting the figure in and out all the time. The sectar style pilot figure is in really nice shape, tight joints, the plastic is nice and bright, there's a little bit of yellowing at the seams on the figure, but the real problem here is that the pins from the sheath snapped off into the torso. This is really a very common problem. Also usually stirrup pins snap off as well, but we've luckily avoided that in this situation. Both the feet are clear of pins and we also have all the pins still on the chassis of the vehicle. Overall pretty good shape and we'll take a look at this guy later and figure out how to get those back pins out of there. Moving on to the vehicle you can see we have the original yellow wings which are a pain in the butt to replace if they're missing. The wings are made of flexible vinyl and really easy to clean up. The body of this vehicle is a little dirty on the high spots but overall is in nice shape. The seat easily pinches off revealing a nice clean battery compartment. This is a huge plus for us as well. If the batteries were left inside from the 80s or 90s it can make a huge blue mess inside. A little bit of scuffing on the green canopy. The silver paint is a little oxidized, but we might be able to polish that up a little bit. Uh, the bottom of the vehicle is loose, which tells me someone's been here before me. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's going on. This thing was described as functioning mechanically, but the light up feature is not working. Since I was doing this live, I wasn't sure which screw hole to go into. It's actually just the center screw hole would help us remove that bottom panel in the first shot. So right away we see that the lead going to the motor has been disconnected, so that's going to be one of the first things that I repair. Let's go ahead and see if there are any other obvious physical problems inside of the vehicle. Taking a look at the internal wiring, you can see it's actually really neatly organized. It looks a little bit chaotic if it's your first time looking at it, but if we just step through everything, it's really not that confusing. My OCD doesn't allow me to leave the switch upside down, so I just flipped it over while I had the toy open. Since I don't have a circuit tester and I'm not really an electrical kind of guy, I'm just going to look for obvious breaks or kinks in the wiring, something that would cause an obvious short. Since there were no obvious physical connection breaks, I'm just going to close the toy up, fix the motor connection, and see if that fixes things. So closing the toy up, I'm being careful not to destroy any of the wiring, and also you can see that on-off switch has to thread through a little slit in the bottom. You don't want to bend that over while you're closing it. I reinsert the body screws and lightly tighten everything. I took the toy downstairs, soldered the broken motor lead. I found out the motor works fine, driving the bump and go feature and turning the decorative motion cam gears at the legs, but the light feature isn't working. There's a metal flap switch here which turns on and off when the front arm scissor, and it turns the lights on and off. There must be a fault somewhere in the wires leading up to it, so I kind of jump over that circuit with a wire. Turns out all the lights do work, so it's one of the leads leading up to the flap that's broken, so I just went ahead and replaced both of them. Luckily, that repaired the issue. The vehicle works fine. So now it's cleanup time. I have a little magic eraser here, and I'm going to use it to buff out some of the scuffs on the green canopy. There's just a lot of wear from it being in the package, rattling around. High spots always get worn when they're inside of a box, so we're just going to scuff it up with the magic eraser, then buff it with a paper towel. Then I'm taking a little car polishing compound, using random motions here so that we don't end up with a lot of scratches in a particular direction. I'm using a damp paper towel here and letting the fibers of the towel do the work, and you end up with a really nice clear result, much better than it was initially with lots of hairline scratches. Now, there's a clear coat on top of the chrome that gets fogged over, and the chrome itself can also become oxidized. There's not really a whole lot you can do about this because the chroming is so thin. If you do work it, you can get the clear coat to shine up a little bit, but the chrome, if it's rusted underneath there, there's not really a whole lot we can do. In this case, I just left most of it alone because I didn't want to risk removing the chrome. Now we have a nearly complete vehicle. It wasn't mentioned in the auction that the handlebars were missing, so I need to figure out some kind of replacement for that. I thought I could just remove the little canopy from the top, but unfortunately I can't. It's held into place with three little green tabs, but those green tabs were locked into position because of the white plastic that's underneath the red plastic outer shell. Once we took apart all of that, we were finally able to pinch the little green canopy to remove it and find plastic with a diameter that's going to work out for handlebars. In this case, I just stole the part from a Jeep and made a quick custom part to see what we could get away with. And then I go through the process of putting all the screws back, the jaw screw, the two head screws, The end result ends up being pretty good. It holds the figure on actually better than the original handlebars, but I'm not too thrilled with the look, so I'm just gonna go the extra mile here. I actually have a complete condition version of this thing, and since I know I can remove the original handlebars without harming the toy, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a copy of the original part. 
I just take the original part, put it on a hot glue stick, put it inside of a paper box that's sealed with hot glue, sprayed it all with mold release, filled it with RTV silicone, waited for the silicone to cure, cut the part out of the mold, cut a few vents to allow air and resin to escape as the mold's being filled, which gives us a pretty solid result each time with very few air bubbles. The red coloration was achieved with some dye. You can see I had to make a few copies until I got the color quite right. The color of the original part was actually blue. I just used red because it's what I had on hand. Taking a look at the figure, we can see we have those two pins still stuck in the back. We've got to figure out how to get them out. I'd used a hot needle before to remove them, but it just destroys the pins. So I'd actually never opened one of these toys before. I just quickly unscrewed the screw on the back. So you can see I'm always wiggling the arms and legs, and that usually helps slip the two halves of a figure apart. Wedging it with my fingers, being very careful not to break anything. It does seem like it's glued together, but I'd forgotten why I didn't open one of these toys before, and it's because of the decorative belt sticker that's on these things. So in this case, I'm going to take a bit of a gamble here, peel the sticker back so that I'm able to pry the torso open. If something bad happens, we'll figure out a repair for it. The head has a really weird extension on it, kind of similar to the original Sektar's toy that it's based off of. And once I open the toy, really, it's just almost identical to the original Coleco patents for Sektar's. So then we're going to carefully pry away this little joint tree from the center of the figure. It slowly slides out but does come out, being careful not to break those two pegs. And then we finally have access to the pegs that were originally coming off of a sword sheath. I just quickly grabbed a bamboo skewer and I'm trying not to stab myself in the fingers. Normally I would just have this sitting down on the table and pop the parts out for better leverage, but I just wanted to show you what I was doing. There you have it, pins that you could glue back onto an original part. So we're just going to put the limb tree back into the center of the toy, aligning it to the original pins. Again, trying not to break anything because we don't want to have to repair anything else. Then we put the two halves of the torso back together, trying not to pinch that sticker in the process. The belt actually did stick down fairly well, but the little end on the belt is flipping up a little bit. I just used a small double-sided adhesive roller to stick that back down. Overall, not the greatest idea to remove that belt, but it didn't work out as badly as I thought it would. If you wanted to be a little more persnickety, you could clean off the adhesive with some alcohol and reapply only brand new adhesive with the roller instead of stacking up adhesives. We put the single screw in the back. So now we have the figure again, able to hold accessories on its back. It makes it look a lot cooler. That's it really, a complete repair tutorial from head to toe on this thing. We're lucky we didn't have to do any of the interior mechanism, but it really seems very reliable. The gears are just so large that drive the arms and legs that I can't imagine they would actually break. Again, just a really smart design. Overall, fairly easy to maintain, which is really a testament to this company, even though it is a bootleg toy. I feel like the quality level is just really high. Thanks for watching this repair tutorial, and as always, stay tuned for more Black Tub Bootlegs.